Welcome to week 13 of Grand Belm, the final episode, um, the grand finale, the thing that we've been waiting for all this time. And for some reason, they dropped it the day before. Um, they usually do like 12 hours earlier than usual. So this is going to be pretty late for you guys. Usually I like to drop the video right after the episode comes out, helps people find it and everything. Um, episode 13. So what happened in episode 12? Episode 12 was probably the, my favorite episode of the show so far and probably the best episode that they've had so far because we got this emotional moment with Mangetsu. We got Shingetsu realizing that everything she's wanted will be, you know, co counter to her in intuition to what she's wanted to do with Mangetsu and keeping her alive because she's this magic doll type person. And then Mangetsu realizing that even if it costs her her life, she wants, you know, Ernesta to remove all the magic from the world. Um, and we had this really emotional final character sequence for Mangetsu. And they've been fighting Suisho for a whole episode now. And she's still somehow not defeated, despite their best efforts. And things are just nuts. Um, and the story's going to get wrapped up this episode. I don't know how it's going to happen. We kind of already have tied a bunch of loose ends up in the previous episodes. We already know what's going to happen with the triplets and everything. They're kind of just resigned to their place in the world. But we don't know ultimately what happens with Magia Kanaris. Ernesta and Mangetsu. Um, whether something will happen to bring her back, we don't know. This world is magical after all. You can't really write anything off like that. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> This Magia Kanatis thing is so manipulative that it's kind of becoming crazy. A couple people left comments last episode talking about how Ernesta is really the chosen one and that this whole thousand year battle was to set up this one confrontation she's having with Suisho right now um, and that it's been testing her this whole time from the very moment she started and it only set up Suisho over these thousand years in order to test Ernesta this way. So it had to have her also be this guardian who got more and more powerful over all these years until only the person who defeated her could be the princeps, uh, you know, mage. Um, and now it keeps telling us that the, the Magi Kanadis is now like giving them all, all this magical power to make it even like harder for them to kill each other, essentially, like with great power comes great responsibility. So Magia Kanadas keeps giving them more and more power to test their ability to use it, I guess. Um, I'm still of the of the mindset, or this is this would be more interesting to me if this happened. If just nobody became the princeps mage, and then when when the you know the dust settles and whoever's won has won, they become the new guardian. And we just restart the cycle all over again. I doubt that'll be the case though, because it's not a very satisfying ending. Um, and to be fair, I will be more satisfied with whatever the show comes up with. I just thought that was an interesting idea that they could go with, but they're probably not going to. Um, and I'd, I prefer the way that the show is doing it with one actual winner because it feels like the battle has more meaning that way. So ignore my stupid idea. <laughs> the old bait and switch. Uh, I got you looking over here. Oh, you didn't see. Oh, uh, it was other, my actual other hand doing the, you know, the tricks. Ernesta's pretty good at this fighting stuff, I must say. I don't know where she gets it from, but she's pretty much killing it with this battle stuff. Um, her mech, <laughs> she just sacrificed her mech in order to get a shot off. Bro, that was next level stuff. Good job, Ernesta. Yo, this voice actress is killing it. I already talked last episode about Suisho's voice actress being actually insane for doing this part. And especially the last two episodes, she's been killing it. Like, and this, just, just, this, this line, de oh my God, she's got me all kinds of messed up right now. This line delivery that she just put out, that's pretty nuts. I don't think I've ever seen an evil performance delivered quite so convincingly without being like super, super over the top, like that dude in ReZero or Jill DeRay in the Fate Zero series. Like, that's the only other two villains I can think of that have been delivered like so next level, like kind of flamboyantly. But, um, but those guys, I think, went over the top with it and kind of made it silly. But she kind of like plays to her part of being this kind of power possessed. Uh, like guardian figure who's been around for a really long time without overselling it to a degree. Um, she's just expressing her grievances with the people who have challenged her up to this point. They're like, why do you want peace so much? Like all this power can't bring peace. And she has a point if you think about it. Like tradition, like historically, if you think back to all the people who've had great power in the past, in general, it doesn't really bring great peace because great power or the people who kind of get to that kind of power only got to that kind of power by thinking about how much 
or how they could get more and more power. So when they reach that stage, it's not like some switch is going to flip inside them and they're going to start thinking about how can I maintain the peace. They're going to keep accruing power because that's how they got to where they ended up. And that's the thing that's going to keep them going. Um, and that means wars, uh, uh, allying with other nations to take over other nations and then taking over that nation afterwards, kind of killing two birds with one stone. Uh, historically, great power has always brought great violence and great tragedy, never really great peace. Um, this is the point Suisho is making. And of course, because this is an anime, Ernesta is going to break the cycle and use her power to bring peace. We know that, but she's making a good point that we could apply even to our own world and we could see that historically power does not bring peace. Oh, shit, the ghost of Bangetsu came back to save her. Okay, okay, I'm not going to interrupt the action too much. Let's keep going. Did their mechs fuse? I bet their mechs fused. It looks like their mechs fused. Oh, this is so hype. Okay, I think their mechs fused. Oh, snap, she transformed like Frieza. Oh, oh I get it, I get it. She's like, she's only half of a whole, and the other half of her is Mangetsu, so she's like summoning that spirit, and they're uniting. This is like a Digimon transformation, and their mechs have united, and her costume has changed and everything to reflect that. Um, also want to mention, this is basically a philosophical battle at the end of the day. Suisho doesn't believe that the power that she guards can be used responsibly, and Mangetsu and Shingetsu believe also that the power can't be re used responsibly, but they also believe that the, this kind of violence to chase after it is unnecessary if you just put it away for good. Um, it's kind of interesting that they're on the same side of the card here, because usually the kind of battle that we see is people who believe power can be used responsibly and people who don't. And the people who don't usually end up being the guardians and the people who do are usually the heroes of the story. Um, traditionally, we've seen, this is, for example, Gurren Lagann, um, Lord Genome doesn't believe the spiral power should be used because it would get too out of hand and the anti-spirals would come in and shut everybody down. So he just represses everybody uh, keeps them living underground so they never ever have the ability to use that spiral power. Um, and then Kamina and Shimon are like, we can use this. Uh, maybe not Kamina. Uh, he doesn't make it to Lord Gino. Um, Simon is like, we can use this properly. And he ends up, you know, defeating the anti-spirals at the end of the day. That's the traditional philosophical battle we see. Um, but that was in 2007. Things have changed since then in the grand context of the societal view towards things. Because now we have the battle between Ernesta and Suisho, and Suisho's like, none of you deserve this power, um, no one should get it. I'm just going to stand here and not let anyone get it ever. And Ernesta's like, I agree with you that no one should use this, but I'm not just going to let people throw away their lives chasing after it either, I'm going to abolish it forever. So it's, it's interesting to see how the, the argument has changed over the years. Um, I think this is more of a realistic argument than the one we saw back in the day, which can tell you something more about like the, the outlook of our society in a sense, because we maybe used to be more enthusiastic and optimistic about things. And now we may be a little bit more cynical because we're arguing about the, you know, semantics of how power should not be used, whether it, if it should be used or it should not be used as we were back in the day. I think we've come to realize that great power does bring its own set of flaws and that maybe somebody shouldn't be trusted with so much power. No one man should have all that power, as they said. Uh, now, Kanye West was ahead of his time. Okay, now back to the show. There will never be a time when playing the OP in the final battle scene will be cliched. I mean, not cliched, overused. I will never ever get tired of that. Please keep doing that. I will never get tired of it. It builds the hype like you would not believe. Okay, back to the fight. Yo, don't act like I don't know what that ending means. I know exactly what that ending means, show. You can't trick me. I knew it when she was putting her hands over the flowers, bro. Uh, even when they tell us there's no magic, there's still magic. The magic is just not what we expected it to be. Uh, I know what she did. Okay, so... I guess that's the point of doing this, right? Okay. Well, let's make it to the end of everything, and then I'll explain everything. Okay. This is the final everything. Everything is done. We're at the very, very end. Okay. The last half of the episode, I honestly just got caught up in watching it. Um, they've done a clever, a few clever things this episode. So 
they they impose this kind of false division between Mangetsu and Shingetsu from the very beginning. They kind of showed us that they were opposite to each other and they weren't really, you know, like compatible in any way. Like they were friends, but they were kind of like polar opposites of each other, right? That's what we were led to believe. And at the very end, after Mangetsu sacrifices her life in order for Ernesta to break the Magi Kanadas and remove all magic from the world, we kind of thought she was gone forever. And then she shows up and then we realize that you know, the real Mangetsu was inside of her all along. And this would have been really cheesy if it wasn't for the fact that we like Mangetsu so much that we'll take wherever she shows up, no matter in what form it is. Um, And it also leads to transformation. This is what I always say. If you're going to pull some kind of weird gimmick and do something that comes, sounds like it might be cheesy or just some kind of like cliche trope, have it make some kind of like lasting change in the characters, right? So when Mangetsu shows up in spirit form, what happens? Um, Ernesta changes completely her whole attitude on life changes she realizes that you know like the the real Mangetsu was inside her all along and she like reveals part of herself that was there but she didn't want to like she had either repressed or she wasn't paying attention to and like it was part of her the whole time and she then transforms her mech changes um and look this screen is perfect for this actually if you notice Mangetsu's mech has been white and purple this whole time while Ernesta's has been black and green which are like actual negatives of each other um so when they combine they form a black and purple mech which is super awesome um and then they battle Suisho they win they go to the Magi Kanadas thing and her costume changes too costume changes to this black and white uh thing with like a like a kind of like uh, like a crest, like a holy goddess type crest in the background. Um, and she has like a pink crystal and everything. Just all aspects of her personality are now fully revealed. And she uses, she actually breaks the cycle. And that's what this whole anime is about in a sense. Um, this whole anime has kind of been about the cycle of violence and how power allows people to perpetrate perpetrate violence on each other. Um, and I already mentioned how it's very unique in the sense that it's told using an all-female cast, which is never the case in these kinds of stories. It's almost always exclusively a male story, which deals with violence and kind of generational, like a generational persecution, like or generational cycle of violence type stuff. Naruto famously has a lot of this in it, um, where he always talks about breaking the cycle of hate. Um, he did this with pain and like various other things, because in that ninja world. When people kill someone, their family gets revenge. We've already talked about this. That's kind of what Grand Belm is about, in a sense. Um, but it's also about attaining power through this kind of violence. So when that power is finally attained, I just mentioned earlier in this episode, that when you get that kind of power, the kind of people that usually get to that place don't really have you know, the kind of uh, brain that allows them to just dis- discard that power and bring peace or do something that doesn't involve gaining more power. Like if you've set your brain to do one thing, you're probably going to continue doing that because you only attain that top status by being very good at that one thing. Ernesta, on the other hand, because of this transformation that she has and this like profound commitment that she has to getting rid of magic from the very beginning, um, she's able to keep that, you know, earnestness throughout and she actually abolishes magic once and for all, or so she says. Um, And... Suisho kind of reveals to her the consequences of what will happen if she does this. She's so related to magic that if she erases all trace of it whatsoever, she kind of live this half existence where she's basically like a ghost. She can only watch people. She can't interact with them. She'll become like the memory lost people or those faded magic people that we saw in earlier Grand Belm episodes after they lose in the Grand Belm. Um, so she says, you know what? If that's what it takes, let's do it after she's urged on by this ghost of Mangetsu who comes back to say, you know, this is what it means to give up magic. We were talking about this from the very beginning. Mangetsu, probably the coolest wingman you could possibly have. Um, at the very end, Ernesta, she's walking around. We see all the characters who aren't, who weren't in Grand Belm or didn't use magic walking around. But Nene is somehow there. I don't know how that works. Um, and she waves her hand over these flowers. And we go, oh, if she had magic, those flowers would bloom. That's what we think. It, it lingers on that shot for like five seconds when she's holding her hand over these like unbloomed flowers. And then she goes to class. Another thing I want to mention is they change her costume as well. Um, when she's in that ghost zone, because she's completely transformed from what she was previously. So now she's wearing pink. Her hair is lighter. Um, she dresses more colorfully than she used to because Ernesta's, you know, like her black mech. She's kind of a downer in that sense. 
but now she's kind of brightened up because the inside mangetsu inside her has been released so she's more of a like balanced person now full moon new moon so she's somewhere in the middle um and a, a new transfer student walks into the to the room wearing the same uniform as all of the other students in particular it looks very much like a certain mangetsu from the back uh ernesta looks to the front of the classroom and smiles and we see flowers blooming now what does that mean i'll tell you what that means that means she used magic to make the flowers bloom which means magic still exists in this world which means she brought mangetsu to life right that's what that means to me i don't know what that means to you it's that kind of ambiguous ending that certainly merits discussion um We've been talking about the show for a long time now. I unwittingly skipped a couple weeks in between. I probably shouldn't have. I feel like I've done the show a disservice, but I did my best to cover the end of it as best as I possibly could. This has been a very good show, probably the best of the season for me in terms of the plot and the themes that it deals with. And I feel like a lot of people who either stopped watching after the first couple of episodes, I feel like they kind of missed the point of it. I feel like the first two because of the way that anime seasons work these days, they focus so heavily on the action and like putting that you know front and center and like the cuteness of the girls and everything that they they didn't focus on the whole like family of mages, bloodlines plotting against each other, just thousand years of violence um, and all these themes that they've been dealing with over the past ten episodes. Um, and I'm sure that the action they wanted it to attract people, and certainly I was also impressed by the action that they had because as I've mentioned before. There's no CG in this whole show. All of it's 2D. All the effect animation is done 2D. And it just looks great, first of all. Um, and I thought, I think that they thought by putting that action front and center, they could get more people than if they focused on the story. And I do agree with them in that sense. Um, and of course, we found out a couple weeks ago that it was actually Juki Hanada who wrote this, uh, which explains a lot, actually. I was wondering why the writing was so good. Um, and it was revealed that he was Yuki Hanada this whole time. When you looked on Wikipedia, you could find that out. Uh, I feel like more people would watch this if they knew that. <laughs> Maybe they should put her name first in the credits or something. I don't know. It's, it, this is the kind of show where if you give it a chance, I feel like it'll really win you over. And it, I feel more for these characters than I feel for any of the characters in this season so far. And probably the last... Maybe la but last season was also really good, so I don't know about that one. Um, but this season, for sure, this is the show go-to show for me. Uh, we're coming to the end of the season, only two weeks away from the start of the, the fall season. Summer's officially over, you know, we're past that September 22nd deadline. Um, and we're getting into the stage where this show is done, a couple other shows are winding up. Uh, I still don't know why they dropped this show early last night. Uh, it means that I have now a 12-hour gap between when it came out and when I covered it. That's fine, but I feel like people will miss it because it, they dropped it in a weird time. Um, maybe they got moved up into a prime time slot in Japan. I would very much like that if that was the case, but I somehow doubt that uh, the time difference is like 12 hours. So if it dropped last night, that means it was on Friday morning in Japan, which is, I, I don't think, a very good time slot. Uh, just talk more about like the industrial implications of this show. This show, I feel like, has been quite successful in my eyes at least in the sense that it's critically very good if i think even if it people don't catch it in the season that it aired i feel like people will come back to it at some point especially because it's so short and so punchy and it gets really to the point right away very quickly um i don't know if you should watch the show all in one go it's a little hard to digest all the different information and characters that get thrown at you right off the bat and also the familial implications and like grand bell and all the plot twists and everything there's not many plot twists. I meant more like there's depth to it. I don't know if you can watch it all in one go. It's pretty slow paced as well. So unless you're down for that kind of stuff, it might be harder to get into that. As well as I've been watching it weekly and enjoying it immensely as I have with most of the shows this season, um, watching it weekly that is. And I feel like if you had to watch four or five episodes back to back, I feel like the talking would get to you at some point. Uh, a friend of mine mentioned when I told him about the show, uh, he mentioned that uh, it felt very jarring to skip between the dialogues and the battles. Um, and I think that was a creative choice that they went with on purpose. Um, this is a battle royale show kind of in the sense that people are just thrown into battle. And I think by focusing on the thrownness, like we've seen multiple times in the show when the moon comes up, that just the the land transforms and they're just in Grand Belm. And I think that's actually kind of crazy because it hits the whole point of it is that it hits you and you're not prepared. Like regardless of what you think 
or whether you're ready to go or not, when that full moon comes up, you're going into the battle whether you like it or not. I think that's the whole point of it. Um, and I, I, can, I can understand how that could be jarring, but I think that was a creative decision that they made. On, I don't think it was a mistake. Um, the last couple of episodes have just been actually incredibly well done. And I feel like if it weren't for the ending, I would have a harder time recommending this than after seeing this ending. I do now recommending it because episode 12 was probably the best episode of the show. Um, and episode 13 was a very satisfying conclusion. Um, and m- many 13 episode shows don't stick the landing as much as they probably should. Um, and I feel like this show did a better job than a lot of kind of more theme driven shows do on sticking the landing. Cause I feel like it's easy to get up in the air with a lot of abstract stuff, but it's harder to land it. Um, and the show did a good job doing that. Um, that being said, I don't really know what else to say about the show other than tell people signal boost, tell people to watch it. It is on Crunchyroll. I put the link down in the description to watch it every single week. Um, hopefully some of you have gone and watched it if based on recommendation from your friends or whatever else, because it seems like the show is getting more traction. I hope people end up watching it, but you know, all good things must come to an end. Uh, and Grand Belm is now over. It was fun watching it. Maybe one day, a couple years from now, we'll revisit it or see how people's reception of it has changed. Uh, when the show first came out on any chart, I feel like it had like a 57% or 60% rating or something. I hope it's gone up since then. I don't really look at any chart except when the season starts. Um, so when the new season starts, maybe I'll check on the updated rating. That's it for me. Episode 13 of Grand Belm. It's over now. It's the final episode. And just like when Sarah Zanmai ended last season, can't help but feel a little sad that we're not getting a new episode next week. But hey, what can you do? That's how things work. So like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Oh, and I do a podcast with my friends called The Coast Town Podcast. I'll put a link down in the description or you can search Coast Town Podcast on YouTube. I always forget to promote this, so I'm just going to put this here at the end. But like I said, leave me a comment tell, leave, you know, letting me know what you thought about the show. I feel like I've heard a lot of in, like, you know, really insightful things from the comments, especially on these episodes. So thank you guys for doing that. Um, that's it for me and I'll see you in the next video.